Hello songwriters, this is your boy Dean here, and in today's episode, we're talking about a fan favorite, and that is how to use auto-tune. Yeah, 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 yeah. But before we get into auto-tune, I wanna ruffle your feathers a little bit and say that I spend a lot of time and effort making these videos for you. If you're enjoying this content, if you appreciate me getting right to the point and not wasting your time, then have your boys back here and do two things for me. Number one, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. It's not even hard. Then number two, share this stuff with some music making friends. That guy or girl who you know would eat this stuff up. Send them the link. All right, my friends, let's dive into how to use auto-tune in GarageBand. When you're talking about using pitch correction in GarageBand, there's two main ways to do it. One route is more dramatic and the other is more subtle and natural. We're gonna look at both today here in this video. We'll start with how to create the fan favorite auto-tune effect, also known as the T-Pain effect. To start, you have to denote the key of your song within your project parameters because it's going to pitch correct to the key that you denote. Next, I find a dramatic preset to affect my vocal track with. I aim for one that has a lot of reverb in it because it helps give that iconic auto-tuned feel. Lastly, I click on the scissor tool to open the edit window on my vocal track. When the track tab is highlighted, you see a few different options. I start by hitting the limit to key button, which limits any note that I sing to the key which I specified. Next, I turn the pitch correction slider all the way to 100. Now, I'm ready to jam. Yeah, I can sing it any way I want to. I can sing it any way I want to. Yeah, yeah. Oh. That just gets me so inspired. I feel like I want to write an educational song for my kids. And one. Now there are more everyday uses for the pitch correction feature in GarageBand. The way I use it most often is as a gentle pitch correction tool for a vocal take. We'll use this song as an example and I'll show you how I use it in some of my projects. Your lips dream, grace and true, same breath that made the stars speak to my heart. Number one, just like before, is you have to choose your key before you start recording. Because again, it's going to correct the notes based on the key that you've chosen. Number two, we'll engage the limit to key button like we did before as well. Which means it will limit every note that you sing to the specific notes of the key that you've chosen. And thirdly, we're going to use the same pitch correction slider. But this is where we're going to change it up because now we're not going for a dramatic T-Pain auto-tune effect, but we're going for more gentle and natural sounding pitch correction. Let's start by turning the slider down to zero and we'll see what we're working with. Your lips dream, grace and truth, same breath that made the stars speak to my heart. So there you go. We have a vocal take that's not way off pitch, but there's just a note or two that are a little bit flat, mainly in the first line on the word drip. Your lips dream, grace and true. So shouldn't we just bump the pitch correction slider up to 100? Well, let's listen to how that works. Your lips dream, grace and true. Yeah, that is totally the opposite of what I'm going for here. I'm looking for gentle and natural. So this is where I experiment with the position of the pitch correction slider. I incrementally bring down the strength of the slider until I find something that's tuning the vocal, yet is still subtle and natural. Your lips dream, grace and truth. 
same breath that So makes. here at 86, it's still way too strong as I'm getting several notes that are being dramatically tuned. So I'll bring it down even further to something like 66 and see how that sounds. Your lips dream, grace and truth. Same breath that made the stars speak to my heart. Now that sounds more like what I'm looking for. It's helping out those couple notes that are a bit flat, but at the same time, it still sounds natural and it doesn't really sound like I'm using pitch correction on my voice. So you've seen me do it, but here's a few tips on natural pitch correction. Number one is keep it subtle. And you can do that by experimenting with the strength of the pitch correction slider. I found through doing my own projects and other people's projects that that number for me is between 60 and 80, and even more specifically between about 65 and 75. The next thing to note is that the more on pitch your vocal performance is, the harder you can push the pitch correction slider. What that means is, this tool actually works its best with a strong performance that's already in tune. It doesn't work very well with a performance that's really out of tune because then it has to work really hard to push it back into tune and it doesn't sound natural. Which brings us to our last point and that is, your best bet is a strong performance. When it comes to capturing and mixing high quality vocals, you're never going to beat a strong performance that's in tune from the beginning. In GarageBand, a strong performance without pitch correction will sound better than a weak performance with pitch correction. Lastly, I'll save you some headaches and say that choosing the key signature of your song really should be done before you ever hit record. Because if you try and change the key after you've recorded audio, it will transpose all of your recordings to a different pitch and it'll sound totally weird. I was born in West Virginia To keep up with weekly content from here at the Songwriting Studio, simply go to thesongwritingstudio.com and enter your email address.